Hi, I'm Danny, and in this video I'd like to take a look at some of the different types of scientific inquiry, in particular in primary science. So if we take a look at what, what actually is primary science, um, in the simplest form, what we're looking for really is for children to ask a question that can be investigated and then collect evidence to answer that question. To quote Jane Turner, um, it's what children do in order to answer scientific questions about the world around them. If you to look at the working scientifically process, start at the top, they're experiencing and exploring the world around them, they're going to generate questions based on the exploration they do, they consider how they could find out the answers to those questions, then through practical work they'd collect evidence to answer the question, consider how good the, the evidence is, see if they can answer that question if possible and explain the findings and maybe hopefully that would generate some more um, questions and we go around the circle again if there's time which often is an issue in, in primary schools. Science should be about you know, why um, and also prove it, this sort of critical thinking, we're, we're bombarded all the time with misinformation and uh, misconceptions and so we should be looking to, to question these things and to sort of maybe prove whether these things are correct or not. And these are all things that have appeared on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter and so on. Plants that have been given microwave water, apparently that kills them. Fruit rots but something like a McDonald's Happy Meal won't rot because apparently it's full of preservatives. You can test that out, it's nothing to do with the preservatives, it's just it's a very dry food, we can test that. There was an Ikea video a few years ago of a plant that was bullied versus the plant that was spoken to nicely and the bullied plant um, didn't do so well. Easily testable in the classroom. Viral videos like um, the one in the bottom uh, middle there with, with batteries and the forks which apparently makes a coin spin, which is basically a spinning coin played in reverse so it actually goes backwards and eventually stops and things like you know on a particular date pick a certain date Mars will be as big as the moon which pops up on Facebook from time time to time all of these are easy to be testable in a classroom so we can use these as a, as a spark to sort of you know you read this on on the internet sounds a little bit like it's too good to be true well the class can test that if you look at the investigations that have been done in the classroom about half are fair tests um, even more so in, in Key Stage 3. In many schools, doing science inquiry always means doing a fair test. So we sit down and work out the variables and what we're going to control and what we're going to change and blah, blah, blah. I'd like to see some, some up-to-date research on that. I'm not sure if that's been done, but but in particular from, from things I've, I've, I've observed, obviously we get a lot of fair testing. And it's a shame because there's more than just the fair test. It's only one aspect of scientific inquiry. There are four or five other ways um, of doing science in the classroom. We can move away from the fair test. There are times for a fair test. I'm not going to say move away from a fair test, but there are other types as well. And it's just good to be aware so there's a teacher, you can use your judgment as to what is good um, to use for the particular type of investigation you want the children to do. So the six main types here, we're looking at um, fair testing, obviously, at the top there, but also observing over time, so watching how something happens over a period of time. That can be over the course of a day or a week or even longer. A grouping and classifying, so putting things into groups based on their features. This could be sorting materials, this could be sorting animals, putting them into, into groups. We're looking at patterns, so pattern seeking, observing phenomena, maybe using surveys, collecting data, then looking for relationships between the data. It could be research, it could be a particular question that we can't test in, in the science classroom. We can go online, we can use the books, and we can find out the answers. And also problem solving, which is a bit more open-ended way of doing inquiry, where you give them a particular problem. You know, can you stop this egg from breaking if you drop it from a particular height? And so there's elements of different kinds of, of practical work to test out their designs first, and then they can come up with their final design. So problem solving would feature in there as well. Now, fair tests are good when you've got particular kinds of questions to ask. So, you know, if you're looking at things like, does sugar dissolve better in, in hot tea or faster in hot tea? What's the best paper for wrapping fish and chips? Or what's the best material for keeping a cold thing cold? How warm has it got to be for our sunflower seeds to start to germinate? These are things you could do with a fair test where you're changing one thing and you're keeping everything else constant. But there's lots of questions that children are going to ask in the classroom where fair tests are not appropriate. So things like where the daisies grow, in particular on the school field. How do the trees change over the course of a year? What's the water cycle? How does it work? What's it like on the moon? These are things that you could have questions in the classroom. These are questions the children could ask and questions you could pose to them. A fair test is not going to solve those. You need to do other things instead. So let's look at you know, fair testing. Could be things like you know, changing the colour of a food um, affect the birds. Do insects like different coloured flowers? Uh, which materials melt the fastest in warm water? Which drinks the most harmful for our teeth? All of these kind of things are 
are good to do with a fair test. Which material is best for stopping a runaway lorry? We can look at sails on boats, we can look at making um, earmuffs, these kind of things you could link to a, a book the children are reading. So maybe if you're doing um, Peace at Last, the book where, where Mr. Bear can't get any sleep because everything's too noisy, you could use that as the hook, investigate making some nice sound insulation earmuffs that the Mr. Bear can wear. What's the best material for, for him? Looking at blocking UV light, looking at types of sunglasses, using maybe a, a phone and the light sensor from a phone and blocking out the light with a, um, a light source, which are the best sunglasses, these kind of things all are, are fair tests. Another type of investigation is observing over time. These are things that will need something interesting to watch and observe. It's going to develop their skills of observing, measuring, recording, interpreting. Could be a table, could be a diary, could be a log. Uh, good opportunities for taking photographs, making notes, annotating photographs, or you know, building up a series of images over time using a class iPad or, or a digital camera. So an obvious one is in year one seasonal changes where we're looking at how the school grounds, how the plants will change over time. So when you start in September with year one, get the iPads out, get the cameras out, photograph what it looks like outside the classroom, around the school playground, what the trees look like, maybe log the, the temperature every week. And as you go through the course of September through the year into the summer term, you build up a bank every week. We take some pictures. How are things changing? What's the what's the trees look like? We're now in, in autumn, the leaves are falling off. Then we get into winter, then we get spring and the leaves start growing back again. So how does the seasonal changes? That's a nice long investigation observing over time. Not a fair test, but it's still a valid scientific investigation. Take the moon. If you're doing this in year five and we're looking at how the shape of the moon changes you know, or appears to change, obviously the moon doesn't change its shape, but the bit that we see lit changes. Um, do we always see the same face of the moon? You can look at it, you can sort of from, from looking at the patterns of the craters, you know, does the moon s rotate around or do we always see the same face? These are observations you can make over the course of a month um, and we can see what kind of changes happen. Pose the some questions, you know, how do things change um, if we bury them? Let's put things into a, into the ground, let's dig them up every day every now and then see how they look looking to biodegradable foods um, how different to look like from when we were babies what happens to different foods if you leave them out do they all go stale think back to the the, the mcdonald's happy meal how does the light level in the classroom change through the course of a day um, i bought these tea bags on a packet it says they're biodegradable are they really let's test it so these are all questions you can ask the children that are observing over time uh, how quickly we wet sponge dry look at a handprint on the blackboard see how that gets smaller lots of different things you can do for observing over time identifying and classifying again posing questions like libraries or bookshops or supermarkets how do we group the items in the supermarket let's pose these kind of questions why are they grouped the way they're grouped um, how else could we group them i've still got a theory about organizing the supermarket by color all the red things down the red aisle all the green things down the green aisle all the blue things down the blue aisle easy to find you want to find something red what's down the red aisle but the children can then pull that idea apart and why it's stupid and think about how we classify things in a supermarket or any other kind of shop to make it easy to find they can think of a game shop maybe or, or a library so what kind of clothes keep us warm, keep us cool? Let's sort the clothes. Let's take a load of the leaves that we found on the school field. Let's identify and group them by their characteristics. Um, which things make good switches, which things don't. Which things make the light bulb light up if I put it in my circuit, which things don't. Let's look at making keys and charts to identify animals and classify animals. Put them into groups of mammals and birds and fish and reptiles and so on. Um, let's make charts to show what foods different animals eat. Sorting different foods into food groups maybe. Year one or two, sorting materials by their properties. Let's sort the, the materials out into shiny and dull or, or flexible and inflexible or rough and smooth or, or whatever. And year four, solids and gases. There's, there's a good a good sorting activity there with lots of things that may be difficult to put into one category. And let's get lots of discussion. Let's get lots of thinking about what is uh, shaving foam or what is toothpaste. Where would you put that in the categories of solid, liquid and gas? Looking for patterns. Okay. Uh, the biggest man in the world has size 60 feet. Uh, is there a link? Is there a link between height and foot size? Let's find out. Let's do a survey of the class, measure their height, measure their foot size, um, foot length, and see if there's a link. Is there a link between shoe size and hand size, the so length of your foot and the width of your hand? Is there a link between that? Um, do animals have the same diets have the same types of mouth? Let's look at bird beaks. That could lead you into evolution and, and Darwin's finches. Um, how many turns of a key in a clockwork car? So you wind up the car with one turn. How far does it go? two turns how far does it go three turns how far does it go um, do all apples have the same number of seeds um, do big fruit 
have more seeds? Do small seeds make big plants? There's, there's some patterns there. Is there a link between length of holly leaf and the number of prickles? Um, that's a good investigation. Apparently there is no pattern, but it keeps them busy for a little while. Um, are the oldest children the tallest? Do the tallest children have the biggest feet? I've heard that um, fingertip to fingertip is the same as, if you stretch your arms out straight, is the same as your height. Is that true? Let's find the pattern. All these questions you can pose, and then how do we find the results to, to prove or disprove these hypotheses? So lots of things you can do. Um, and then we're doing research as well. Um, there's lots of scientists we can find out about. So people like Mary Anning, you know, who was she? Why was she famous? What did she discover? Give the children um, some scaffolding to, to find stuff out rather than just sending them off to do a page dump of Wikipedia. Where were they born? Where do they live? Why are they famous? Let's have some, some questions to sort of structure the, uh, their findings out. In Key Stage 1 and 2, there are some named scientists. In Year 2, we've got Dunlop, Macintosh and McAdam for materials. We've got Attenborough and Jane Goodall and Ptolemy and Elhazen and Copernicus if you're looking in the space unit. Darwin and Wallace and Linnaeus in year six. Pad this out with other scientists as well. Obviously year year three and four is not getting a lot of loving, so let's find some scientists that are relevant to the, the topics that you're doing there and, and put some more scientists in there. But that's a starting point of scientists they can research and how they worked and what they found out. But there's lots of other kinds of questions you can put in for the children to find out about as well. So yeah, which animals are endangered? How are they threatened? Um, are all microbes harmful to us? what's the impact of plastic, all these different kinds of questions that could be a, a research task. Structure it, don't always just say go and see what you can find out, let's, let's structure the research, you can link this to um, computing curriculum, we've got to evaluate the sources that we're using, how reliable are they, um, do we trust where we're getting the information from, but quite valid uh, research tasks you can do as well. If you're looking for some essential reading on this, a really good book, um, it's not a cheap book, it's more of a sort of staff room book for everybody to share, it's called It's Not Fair or Is It by Turner, Keo, Naylor and Lawrence. Go to the um, ASE website, Association of Science Education. Um, I think the bookstore is now on the Millgate House website, but just Google Millgate House ASE Bookstore, you'll find that. Um, you can buy it there, sometimes cheap, and you'll find it on Amazon. The Siri Innovations website, Inquiring Science for All, has got some nice examples of different kinds of investigation for each of the types. And also the Primary Science Teacher Trust, pstt.org.uk, have a lovely set of resources on um, inquiry approaches, and another one also on inquiry skills that's well worth a look. Um, there's loads you can do. Please just always think about you know what is the best investigation type to match the kind of question the children have got. Um, it's not always going to be a fair test. There's loads of other things you can do as well. So don't always think about we've got to go straight back to what are the variables and what are we going to change because sometimes it's not all about the variables. It's about the question and then coming up with the methods of how we answer these questions. I hope you found that useful. Any questions please get in touch. Thanks very much for listening. Bye bye.